was keen to make this video, but now I don't really know what to say, of course. Okay, well, um, yeah, the other day I saw a video called, um, Diaries of a Broken Mind, and it kind of inspired me to make kind of a little thing or two about dyspraxia because the very little I've seen on dyspraxia has been like about motor dyspraxia with like fine motor coordination and I'm always like uh, there's stuff there with dyspraxia so I decided to make a little diary on my experiences I guess and so um, my background is basically, I couldn't talk, I was missing my first word kind of milestones when I was like a year and a half, close to two, and I got speech therapy for a few months, and because I'd start, even if I learn to word I'd lose it soon after and so and I used to have a lot of tantrums because I had so much to say but I couldn't communicate because my just my mouth wasn't working and so started learning with speech therapy and I started to learn words and before that I learnt sign language so I could communicate and gain confidence while I was learning, like training my mouth to do things and then uh, yeah I started talking properly I guess stringing words and sentences together at about age two and my prosody was still pretty monotonous as it is slightly now so like I, I still, I think in like highs and lows of sentences, um, but like normally if I'm talking, it'll stay pretty kind of the same level, level unless it's something like I'm really, really passionate about or, or I know completely well, but otherwise it's normally kind of like this. Um, yeah, and so I grew up through primary school it didn't really affect me apart from like okay so like first of all I conquered the kind of speech thing but then I and I thought I'd grown out of it but dyspraxia isn't something you grow out of it um but I guess like as I started getting older and learning more and brain developing properly like, well not properly, but maturing, um, like the only kind of noticeable thing in primary school was that I'd like get stuck for ages on one word trying to get it right and I wouldn't be able to move on and so it was part perfectionism as well as like kind of processing like getting stuck and stuff. But other than that, it wasn't really a big deal in primary school because I was like, like everything was easy and I was the, yeah, nothing was challenging and I was always, I was, I was fucking socially weird anyway, as well as being really academic. So that isolated me even more with bullying, blah, blah, etc. But yeah, and then I got to high school, and that was okay as well, except then I started kind of m mum mostly kind of realising that I was slower and, like, getting stuck on writing kind of things more than I should have been, and not doing as well in... Uh, like assignments and writing stuff taking more effort than it should have been and so we 
I got assessed by the school psych in year 11 and Yeah, and they did the, the WISC, which is the basically IQ test for children, and they couldn't calculate my IQ because my, my like, kind of intelligence stuff, like comprehension and reasoning and that, that was always, like, uh, they calculated my general ability index as, like, 98th percentile, but then like processing was way down in like lower border of average and so that's a yeah so that was a very big indicator that even though like my processing is still average it's like way lower than my general ability because like if I didn't have dyspraxia I'd be like unstoppable genius but I doesn't work like that and so yes um they also assessed me on the C top which is some um, Um, uh, C top is a comprehensive test of phonological processing. There we go, which I did today again at a new speech pathologist that I saw for the first time today, and one particular thing. Um, that is very significant in what they found with me was one test called um, rapid naming, which is like get a card with like random letters on it, and it and you have to say it as fast as you can, and so it's like S C K A T N I K C etc. and when I did the test in year 11, I got first percentile, and today I got second percentile again. And so that's, that's like, really exciting, because I've always been good at, like, getting high scores. And so, so this is, like, something novel, as well as it's, like, really, it confirms my struggles, and, like, it, it identifies it pretty strongly. And the lady today was saying that that has huge implications for, like, apparently it's a kind, like, part form of dyslexia, which I would have, I would have connected it more strongly to, like, my dyspraxia, slower processing of the letter on the page taking longer to link to my mouth to reproduce but yeah so I don't know how I feel about having this thing identified as dyslexia as well because I don't know just like dyslexia is always like everyone's heard of dyslexia and I went through my life with like I have dyspraxia and no one knows what dyspraxia is and it's always like dyslexia is the really kind of visible one that that doesn't affect me and so I don't know but it's interesting and validating at least um and Yeah, so basically she was emphasising that I, I'm fine when it comes to short answer kind of stuff because it's just like small question, write it down, whatever, in like small chunks. But then when it comes to open-ended kind of minimal structure, 
research assignments like I've got a million of at uni. Oh, that's where I really struggle because I've got these two assignments, one, both of them. I've got Fortnite extensions on one of them due tomorrow that I'm still no further with than I was a week ago because it's like a literature review which means like reading a million articles, piecing different parts of like information together, thinking like okay this like process, read this bit of information, think oh but I can't, I can't reference this one from this article because that's not the original like the, these are the references for that but then if I go chase those up it'll be like oh I'll read this one and I don't have time for reading that one but I'll like I'll read that one and I'll link to this one and like link and so I'm like oh I can't move on to the next bit of information and so then I'll think is this bit like it sounds the same as this bit, but I know it's not, and how is it different, and then trying to categorise it within my notes, and then I get overwhelmed with that, and, and so I'm like, okay, move on to the next bit, and then I realise that all that stress and all that thinking is just for one page of one reference, for one part of my assignment, and it's it's awful and I hate it and I but even when I approach it I can't get much done anyway because of the negative emotions with it because I just get stuck and overwhelmed and so it's this kind of thing that I can't do I'm fine with writing stuff that I know because like if lectures just taught me the information I had to include in my lecture in my essay and I didn't have to like reference and research and piece bits of information together I'd be fine it'd be it'd be slower writing it but it'd be fine but this is just like this is the bane of my existence, these kind of things. And then I've got, yeah, so this one due tomorrow, I don't know what I'm going to do because it's not even close to a fifth finished. <sighs> yeah. But I'll see, I don't know, I don't know what I'm going to do this, with this one, but I think for future it'll be okay because I've got more support from uni access at uni and stuff like that and my struggles are more clearly identified with like actual evidence of stuff and my speech she said that she can help me kind of break down big assignments and tasks and turn them into lots of little short answers in my kind of approach so that'll be good but um oh yeah also what I wanted to talk about was like because all these like misconceptions and assumptions about me from primary school and high school because I didn't find many things hard because nothing was like cognitive dem cognitively demanding like nothing extreme anyway at the time and so like yeah like everyone making kind of kind of like putting me on a pedestal like oh she's so smart she'll be fine at uni like she she'll be able to as if I'd be able to tackle any problem that I came across just because someone thinks I'm smarter than them but that like that 
invalidates my problems, I guess. And also, yeah, it's just kind of assuming that I have no problems or that I'm kind of some superhero that could conquer everything, which is not the case. But, yes, anyway, I don't know what I'll include. Uh, I don't know what else I would say in another video or if I'll just kind of update on all my assignment woes or whatever but I don't know.